one of the companions who has a story that is particularly relevant to our day and age. And it's relevant because we live in a time of affluence. We live in a time, no matter what financial difficulty we may or may not encounter on a micro level, at a macro level, on a wide level, all of us experience, alhamdulillah, the benefit of living in a society that has lots of privilege that we expect that when we plug our phone charger into a wall socket that there will be electricity that we expect that when we turn on the faucet here at the ISBCC that there will be water these are privileges not rights and these are things that we take for granted sometimes and we forget that not every human being on earth has these same privileges and so Mus'ab bin Umair radiallahu an is a story of a young man who grew up with this affluence. If I could make an analogy that does not have any other connection besides their wealth, Musa bin Umair was like the Kardashian boy of the time. Literally, there is no other connection to them besides their wealth. I guarantee you that. Musa bin Umair radiallahu anhu was somebody who the Quraysh, the Jahili Quraysh, the people who were trying to hurt the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they loved Musa bin Umair for a few reasons. Number one was because he was extremely handsome. He was somebody that had just this, this confidence in his physical image that when he walked in the street, they would say that sometimes women would line up along his daily route just to see him, right? I know some of you guys in here are thinking that happens to you too. No, it doesn't, right? Musa bin Omer is special, he had that. Musa bin Omer, he had a fragrance, subhanAllah, that they said that you could smell him from Blocks away, he smelled so good. He was so wealthy. His family was so wealthy. Khunnas bin Malik. She was so wealthy and so powerful that he got all of his clothes tailored. He got all of his clothes custom made. You know, it's one thing to be able to shop for expensive clothing, to buy nice clothing. That's one thing, right? A lot of us don't even have that ability where we can go and buy like brand name, you know, random undershirts and things like that. No. We have to, you know, cut our costs, make our budget. It's life, alhamdulillah. But some people, they're able to afford very expensive brand names off, they can go to very expensive stores. But there's another level beyond that of opulence, of wealth, where there is no brand name on the clothes. There is nothing on the clothes, just a number that the tailor had stitched because having a, someone's clothes custom made is a sign of extreme wealth that you get everything fit to your body exactly. And this was Musa bin Umair. And one note that they write in the book, SubhanAllah of Tariq of History, is that he used to have his shoes. Not, you know, some people say, okay, get your clothes custom made, but just buy your shoes, right? Be a normal person, buy some shoes. No, even his shoes were custom made and they were sent from Yemen, all the way from Yemen, which at the time was a sign of extreme wealth. So Musa, Musa bin Umair, in summary, had a lot going on. And he was somebody that if you met him today, if you met his circumstance today, you might consider somebody with his circumstances to be spoiled. To be somebody who wouldn't take life seriously because their dad bought them a Mercedes or a BMW and they don't have to care about anything. They're just going to school for the sake of it and whatnot. But Musa bin Umair had a very unique personality trait. And that was that he didn't let his wealth, he didn't let it take over his heart. He didn't let it blind him. You know, subhanAllah, the dunya has this amazingly tricky capability that the more that you chase it, the more it makes you want it. The Prophet Muhammad said in the hadith that nothing will satisfy the children of Adam, the sons and daughters of Adam, i.e. human beings. Nothing will satisfy them except for dirt, i.e. al-qabr, the grave. Because we will keep chasing and chasing and chasing. And you may see this in your own life. That you say to yourself, okay, after this raise, I'm going to stop focusing on work so much. I'm going to start coming home on time, spending time with my family. After I buy this car, no more new cars. We're going to drive them until they, until they break down. After this house, there's no need. We're going to settle. We're going to pay it off. After this, after this. But the reality is that insan also shares the same root as the word nisyan. Human beings share the same root as the word forgetful. And so we are forgetful people. We forget that we make these promises and we keep chasing dunya, 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 and our hearts become absorbed in it. Musa bin Umair didn't have that issue. So Musa bin Umair is surrounded by this wealth, this opulence, this lavishness, 
and he was extremely smart, he was privileged, he was able to take part in the meetings of Quraysh.